All right, friends, give it up. Next up is Tonkatsu with Donkey Kong Country 2. All right, so welcome to the stream. This is Tonkotsu. I'm running Donkey Kong Country 2 and very happy to be able to showcase this game. Uh, I'm gonna be muted during my run, but I'm here with my commentators today. So introduce yourselves if you'd like. Sure, what's up everyone? Rolling in, my name is Mad Mark. I'm gonna be one of the commentators for this amazing Warpless run coming up and I'm accompanied by... Chillix. Uh, another, another one of the commentators, another runner of this game. Gotta be here. All right, so uh, if your Tonkatsu is ready, we're gonna be uh, gonna get this started. So um, Tonkatsu, I'm gonna give you a countdown, then uh, I'll start a countdown from three, and uh, you'll start on go. Is that good with you? Hey, he's muted. All right. Okay. All right. All right. So, feel if whenever you're ready, you can go ahead, Tonkatsu. Good luck on the run. So, all right. So, what's uh, so what is Warpless? So, uh, oh, we Warpless. Oh, sure. Okay. Three, two, one. Rolling in. So what is Warpless? First of all, well, Warpless, as the name entails, no developer intended warps, no wrong warps, or just any skip that beats level instantly, such as the Castle Crush skip. So this last time this category was run was at AGDQ 2018, where two new major time saves were found, which saves about, in total, they save about a minute and 30 seconds. So it, it's gonna be pretty cool. And I'm pretty, I, I hope that Tonka 2 nails those two, those two uh, those pretty sick time saves. It's gonna be great. Yep, and that was one run right there. Pretty fast level. Uh, one two right here is another pretty short level made that's gonna be made even faster with the use of the team throw mechanic. Is it introduced in this game? And so we're gonna be so we're gonna be uh, team throwing up up through the stage pretty much. And that's gonna be the theme of this stage right here. And just like that, we're done. Pretty, pretty straightforward. World 1 is pretty straightforward in Warpless. There isn't that much going on. So yeah, so 1-3 here. So, the gotcha. fa as I like to say, one of the golden rules of DKC speedrunning, any time not spent trolling is better spent trolling. So here you just saw a little moonwalk to be able to set up the camera with the, the two enemies there to be able to roll to alter them. And you want to roll to as, through as many enemies as possible because this you gain a lot of speed by rolling through as many enemies as possible. Yep. Also using the invis invincibility barrel here to be able to roll to all of them. So yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's one three, pretty straightforward. So now one four. So this is one of the first underwater, the first underwater stage in the game. So in this stage, um, contrary to what some people believe, uh, actually taking and guard here is much slower. So we're just going to be using the kongs for the entirety of this stage. Yeah. So uh, see it's you too far guard. out of the way. Yes, too. Uh, and also, uh, one thing about animal bodies, when you pass no animal signs, uh, there's some kind of uh, lag time, there's some freeze frame, so you, you, you'd want to avoid that, also. 
And unlike in DKC1, pressing Y does make you go faster underwater. And other than that, pretty straightforward on a water stage. You're rolling to at the end where there's a DK coin because it's faster. And there you go. Simple as that. All right, one five here is one five here. Is, we're already in one of the hardest stages in the game. The cost is going to be doing these glitched rally double jumps, which are pretty hard to execute. Got like a three frame window for each of them. Uh, uh, only for the first half, though. In the second half, he's going to be he's going to be using the ropes here to. Oh, and Adibus right there to uh, skip to skip a little section of that stage. And please don't soft lock. Okay, okay good. good. Soft because uh, at the end of this stage, actually, there's a chance that depending on how you glide on the end goal target as Dixie, you can actually soft lock the stage, and it's pretty, <laughs> it's instant reset that happens. Yeah. But so now Crow, the boss of World One. So this is the game's biggest RNG factor. So the yeah, first two hits, they're always the same. Uh, you just want to bounce on the egg as fast as possible, then hit Crow. But then here comes the two later phases, which are completely RNG based. So 50-50 to get out of a real egg or a fake egg. And each face loses time, so that's one real egg. <laughs> fake Fakeless. Fake wow. Let's go. That's really Crow's good. Pretty, Crow is pretty, uh, pretty nice today, thank god, because it, it, this boss can absolutely troll you and just decide to give you a billion fakes and. You lose a lot of time and it's not fun. This, this That boss is very well known for uh, the World 1 Infinite as we know it. Yeah. It's not fun. I've seen people get about 15 or 20 fakes or something. It's pretty insane. But now we're on to World 2. So this is where the game really uh, gets much more fun in my opinion. Much more... The, the, the stages are much more dynamic and there's much more... Much more fun movement. But... When we reach a red hot ride, that's gonna that's a completely entire thing that's gonna happen. But other than that, to uh do one is a pretty straightforward stage. It's one of my favorite stages to do uh, IL practice on, to be honest. It's a good and I like this stage to actually warm up. So yeah, so that's two one. So now 2-2, two, two, here we see an example of a big boy or team throw double jump. So whenever you, whenever you throw a Kong, a Kong partner in the enemy and your Kong partner comes back to you after killing that enemy, you have a certain frame window to be able to do another a double jump. And this is what Tonkatsu does to be able to reach the arrow barrel up there. But under that, the end of the level is pretty straightforward. Yeah, again, so, we're going to be using uh, team throws here to to, uh, to uh, make the stage go significantly faster. Uh, two, three here coming up. Another one of the uh, one, another one of those water water stages. Uh, the theme here is that the uh, is that there's this there's that there's a lava that you want to avoid and there's the clappers that that yeah. So yeah, so the main gimmick of a uh, Lava Lagoon is uh, you, you don't want to, you, you have our still friend over here, Clapper, that goes down the water, so... But in this stage, notably, just before the halfway point, it's possible that the game can lag, and it's noticeable lag to especially have two Kongs. But at least unlike DK, uh, uh, at least DKC2 is in a very laggy game compared to DKC3 where there's lag in every stage, because it's objectively the best, of course. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> oh, well, I like to. Well, I like to talk about the stage more. But next stage is probably one of the biggest things to talk about. A notable major reset point. Yeah, and so uh, it's yeah. So this, so there was a well, there was a trick here that was found recently. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there, but. We're gonna be using a Rambi here, and we're gonna be using his charge ability, and we're gonna be, and just like that, we're gonna be skipping with a very precisely time jump. We're gonna be skipping this this big balloon section here. Just like that, we're through. And we're gonna be using this beetle here to clash, make an invisible object, and we're gonna move the signpost there so that we can take Rambi past where the game would want us to be able to use him. 
normally you're not able to play as Rambi on the second half of the stage. But by moving the signpost, you're able to play as Rambi on the second half of the stage, but that doesn't make it any easier. Yeah, that was found... It's pretty uh, damn hard. Yeah, that was found uh, 2018 or 19, I believe. Uh, 2018, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's one of the more recent discoveries. But that was well done. That was amazing. Yeah. Indeed. This is this is this is uh, this is for uh, for good reason. This is a major recent point because oh man, th this is pretty brutal when that happens. But now two five. So squawk shaft. So it's pretty st straightforward stage. There isn't much to talk about. We're gonna be seeing or animal buddy squawks for the last section of the stage you're gonna be some damage boosting to go a little bit faster but under that now would be a good time for a couple of donations before uh, the next boss sure thing we have 20 dollars from ovano look out down below he's congo bongo's hero banana slamma uh, yeah this is a diddy game but when am i going to have another chance to say this put this towards the mario kart 8 run All right, now Cleaver. Uh, another source of RNG in this game, not quite as big as Crow. Uh, where the cannibals spawn here is random, and uh, that, and depending on where they spawn, you can lose up to two seconds from bad cannibal spawns here. And uh, we're gonna be we're, so we're gonna be doing this uh, lava fly uh, by team throwing up into the corner up there. Alright, we're able to we're able to fly over to the other side of the stage where the cannonball uh, spawns, so, uh, saving us about four or five seconds. Very nice, but you need to be careful uh, because, well, if you fail that level fly trick, yeah, it's instant death. So save four seconds or you die. Which can be pretty frustrating. Yep, just like Donkey. That's World 2. Moving on to World 3. Alright, well done. Now, if you've watched any percent runs, this is where the game... This is where the route between 80% and World Blitz start to converge. We're past... Uh, we're past the, uh... We're past the stages that have War Barrels in them, so... If you've seen 80 this is familiar territory for you. And once again, gonna be using Rambi. Charge. Just get through yeah, that this... portion of the stage pretty fast. So yeah, this stage is pretty is exactly the same as in any percent. Dismounting the rhino, the uh, Rambi there to avoid a little bit of a, a little void of uh, freezing animation. Team throwing into the barrel to store a super jump that we're going to be seeing shortly here, and that's going to skip. And getting the super jump there, it skips using the auto barrel, the slow auto barrel. And that saves like six seconds. Yeah, it saves about six seconds, that uh, swamp fly. And thank god, because man, that section is pretty slow with uh, the auto barrel. This is, so this is Glimmers. Uh, the, the gimmick of the stage is that it's all dark and you need uh, you need this fish here that, that's providing some light. In a speedrunner's perspective, uh, this level, this is the hardest level in the game. Uh, not not to not die in, but to do perfectly and to, to not lose yeah, any time at all. Optimize. And the pres uh, this is because the presence of all these, because of all these uh, corners here and there's a, there's a bunch of tight corridors here, and what you want to do is you want to cut all the corners as tightly as you can, and and a lot of the time there's not very much space to do that. So uh, there's a lot of corners here. Yeah, you want to take the corners as closely as possible because every time you go around a corner, you have a slight amount of time. You, you have a slight chance to lose time. You can lose from tenths of a second to full to full seconds lost just because you're doing it poorly, and it can add up a lot. And also, uh, bonk. You don't want to bonk to any walls because this completely stops your momentum. Ooh. I like to give a little nice shout out to, uh, to 
nice. But also, I'd like to give a little shout out to uh, Drum, uh, an old uh, Japanese runner who used, who still has one of the best glimmers Galleon ever done. <laughs> but that's true. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Void too. Void also true. My man, Void. And now we got uh, a Crockett claimer here. Uh, one of the first. Uh, we're gonna be uh, it's, it's just pretty pure plat pure just rolling and jumping but it's also very ha this is also a, a pretty hazardous stage uh, especially to skip using some of these uh, these crockets here very easy yes, to ride in here uh... especially on 1.0 Yes, it's worth mentioning that Dunkatsu is playing on the version 1.0 because for Warpless, as a, because of the newer, because of the new tricks that were found, uh, one, Japanese 1.0 is actually the fastest version for Warpless. But you can still run Warpless on version on any versions of 1.1 just fine. There's no problem. Yeah. But on a, from on version 1.0 of the croc head, the croc heads you, you just saw, you can uh, on 1.0 it's actually easier to clip through them compared to 1.1. So that's that's a noticeable difference and it's and it's worth pointing out because there are some slight differences between 1.0 and 1.1 and if we see and, and we might mention them if uh, we need be and but then but, now, but then uh, here comes rattle battle oh boy this stage this stage is rather infamous in the or uh, for a couple of reasons because yeah, the, the overall hitboxes hit the snake's hitbox yeah. isn't is can be rather uh, Deceiving, I suppose. There, are t there, there's gonna. Sometimes there's times where runners will take damage when they, they, when it looks like they're not supposed to. But it's one of those stages where it goes by the script. If you move the same every time, then nothing, then nothing too crazy will happen. That was pretty clean. A slime climb here. We're gonna be uh, so we're gonna be swapping we're gonna be swapping underwater, and it's gonna store super jump, and that's gonna allow us to skip this uh, beginning section of the stage here. But at a side effect, that what the super jump does is that you skip the trigger that makes the water rise, so you are not so you cannot fall down because if you fall down, oh man, that that's a problem. You're not you're some sections that yeah, you're you're unable to come back up, so you need to be careful. Yeah, so, a bunch of rope climbing here, just avoiding these bees, like Takatsu does. I don't remember if Takatsu goes, goes for the uh, the super big boy at the end. Yep, he does. Yep, that's a uh, big boy, and it skips, and it skips the, uh, the, last, uh, the last section of the level. It saves about five seconds. But we call it the super big boy just because you do you do a big boy, but you kill you kill two enemies instead of one. Mm -hmm. So this we are in Bramble Blast. Uh, this now this song uh, I'm sure it reminds a lot of people of their childhoods. So can I get a sour please in the chat for the music? <laughs> yeah, this this is a, this is a very relaxing uh, track. So Tonkatsu. Uh, uh, Doing all these quick shots here. If you if you shoot it out of a barrel, uh, well, I think we're I think we're past all of them. But if you shoot out of a barrel on the same direction that it's facing, and you get it within three frames, well, black, black clips coming up here. Oh, very nice. What nice. Expensive. Well done. So vine clip. So what's vine clip? It's you have to do a big boy from the clamp on, and you need to get the maximum height possible from your jumps, and you need to hit a rather precise location on the on the vine, and you need to team chart the correct moment to be able to clip through the vine. It saves about 10 to 12 seconds because, but if you don't get the uh, the vine clip, you have multiple backups that, uh, that are available to you. You have about at least two or three backups. Yeah. But now, Kajol, oh boy, this, 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 this is the most boring boss in the game. But there's one thing Takatsu is going to be doing. So he's going to be taking the TNT barrel and as he's going to be counting down Dixie's breath, breath or um, oscillations, whatever you want to call it, to be able to hit Kajol as early as possible. And you just saw... 
So in total, all the uh, the quick hits they save in total two seconds, but you fail one of them, you lose a ton of time. It's pre it's pretty lame, and uh, this is all you can do in uh, in this boss fight. It's it's pretty it's pretty boring, and it's pretty boring to learn too. But until the next level, that would be another good time for donations. Absolutely. So we have five dollars from Beetle. Excited for Donkey Kong Country 2. Much love for the first game I ever played. Y'all are a lot better at it than three-year-old me was. $20 from the Gaming Keys. Woke up this morning to Donkey Kong Country 2. Let's get more haikus. Got time for one more? Sure. All right. Uh, $10 from Call Me Ted. Donkey Kong Country 2 is one of those SNES games that infuriated me as a child and now as an adult. Looking forward to this game being completely demolished by an experienced runner. Good luck to, Kanka uh, to Tenkatsu on the run. This is a, a, a hornet hole here. Uh, the gimmick of the stage is that uh, there are see there's these walls and floors that are made of honey. And you need to. Ooh, that's. Oh, well, that's kind of bad for Takatsu. Uh, so what? So well, Takatsu, what's gonna be doing here? Was well, he's gonna be? Uh, he was gonna. He was going to do a trick called Scrolly Scroll here, which is at, at this. Which at this point in level, you oh, would. Oh yeah. Yeah, at this point in level, the screen will be scrolling pretty rapidly here. But uh, he needs. Uh, he needs a squitter to be able to uh, do the trick. So, losing about 10 seconds, and we don't get to see it. That's unfortunate, but what happens during scrolly scroll is that for some reason, so you make your web under the hook, then you drop quit, you dismount squitter, you get back up on squitter, and for some reason, it triggers the game, doesn't know what to do, and decides to scroll you extremely fast, and you take damage to be able to cancel out the effects of a scrolly scroll and then you're able to continue to proceed as normal so this one that would happen yeah so about that uh so uh to further elaborate on that level uh there was there was this honey that you need to, that you need to climb up on some of the walls and that's very very hard to optimize it's it has been compared to uh, super metroid uh a wall jumping. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this in... is one of the hardest. Yeah, one of the hardest basic mechanics to master, actually. Yeah, I'm not even joking. Yeah, it's it's almost impossible. It, it's there's there's almost no skill ceiling as to how fast you can climb the honey. Yeah, now we're in. Uh, so now we're in this stage. Uh, Target terror. There isn't much to talk about on this stage. It's an old scroller. One thing to note is that you you want you, you're able to skip some flitters to be able to go a little bit faster, but that's basically it. So auto scroller. Well, done. time for donations. Sounds good. Uh, Twenty-five dollars from Ozzy Ozzy James. DKC two is objectively the best. Let's get that Mario Kart eight deluxe run. And forty dollars from Hafki. Who's the best animal companion in Donkey Kong Country? And why is it On Guard? I do like On Guard. On Guard's really nice. Uh, I'll say one thing. Hank Rambi, by the way. SMH. $50 from Robo Slime. Donkey Kong Country 2 is a masterpiece. It absolutely consumed my life as a kid, so it's always nice to see it get demolished. If you guys have watched any percent runs of this game, uh, you'll you'll recognize that there is a wrong one here that's normally done. Uh, we're not gonna be doing that, but even without the wrong warp, this this level is still just as hard without the wrong warp because look at what the cost is doing here. He's shooting, he's gonna, he's shooting at, he's shooting at all these enemies while trying to avoid more at the same time. Yeah, trying to keep your speed optimal in this stage is very hard because you have to be mindful of every single enemy, clear every single enemy, well, not every single enemy, but just 
kill the enemies that are in your path to make sure you, you, you can keep your, your, your momentum uh, to the max as possible, and it's not easy at all. What I like about World Place is that you get, you get to, you, you do get to see the stage, and it, it, this stage just feels so good to do right. It's a great stage of War Plus, in my opinion. It's a very good stage. All right, coming up. All right, so yeah, you can yeah you can actually fit through that uh, that little that little wall uh, hall there, like the Kalti did there. Worth pointing out that there's there there are slightly less enemies on the Japanese version compared to the U version on that stage. And yes, uh, there's uh, in the Japanese version in a couple of stages. It's worth mentioning that there are less enemies than in the uh, the U version of the game. Yeah, there's one if you were be there in that in one of the last sections there, uh, then on the U version. So now rickety race. So not auto scroller. So we're donations. getting the boost barrel. Yeah, more <laughs> donation time. Sounds great. We have a nice $250 donation from Dunster. Thank you so much. It says, the Donkey nice. Kong Country series is one of my favorite game series. What better time to donate than now, along with supporting Doctors Without Borders in this critical time? Thank you, friend. We have one of my favorites. $10 from Leaf Bear, a Donkey Kong haiku. DK, Donkey Kong. He's the leader of the bunch. We all know him well. Much shout out, much support to GDQ and Doctors Without Borders. Thank you, friend. And $150 from Tyham. This game was a huge part of my childhood and getting to play it with my parents. Still to this day, it's one of my favorites I play yearly. Good luck to the runners and thank you all for putting together this amazing event I look forward to all year. Mudhole Marsh here. Mudhole Marsh here is one of the coolest stages in the game to watch. Uh, very scary to play because he's gonna be rolling through. He's gonna be rolling under a bunch of platforms that normally you would roll on just for safety. Uh, this is just, this is the stage where I where I would best compare this with. Uh, this is the stage where you roll deep. Oh yes, you roll unfathomably deep in that stage. But uh, I, some, most, most of the time, I prefer to let this stage speak for itself. But this is one of the harder stages in the game by far. You just saw Tankatsu did, did do some pretty deep rolls, and you're very close to a. Uh, yeah, you're very close to death, but yeah, uh, yeah, much exactly. of the time you're rolling under. Oh, the oh the wiggle. Yeah, the wiggle there. It's nice. it yeah, the wiggle there despawns one of the uh, one of the barrels that the, the that the cannon that the cannon guy shoots out. So you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for the barrel to. Yeah, you can just jump on the platform immediately. Oh, yeah, the, you lose much oh, less the, time. Oh, the the D boost here. Nice. So what Takatsu did right there was he was by climbing up, uh, 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 throwing your throwing the other Kong, and getting hit by the clap trap, He's able to get a, a, a sort of super jump uh, that skips the that skips a, a big portion of the uh, uh, the level you saw to the right. It takes about it like 15, I want to say 15 seconds. That's one of the harder variations of it too, so I'm impressed. Yeah, there. If I remember, there's a name for it, which is called the Claw Hyper Super Mega Team Throw Hyper Mark Three Something Something. <laughs> Pretty complicated name. But now we're we're Rambi again. Heck, Rambi, by the way, because I don't like Rambi. Just a race until the end. Oh but yeah, then, the uh, oh yeah, he's gonna be re-entering four four here to uh, set up for a massive glitch that you're gonna be seeing later on in World Six. So yes, he's he's actually he's Takatsu has take took the 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 plus barrel, the boost barrel with only Dixie. 
th this is going to be setting up for Castle Crush later on. It it's going to be pretty wild what's going to happen in that stage. <laughs> Just, you're, you're going to see what happens. It it's pretty cool. But now we're on King's Instinct. So, it's worth mentioning, once again, since Tonkatz is playing on version 1.0, there's a significant difference between 1.0 and 1.1 on that boss. That, bo that boss, uh, King's Instinct, moves much slower on 1.0, so you need to just adjust and adapt your movement and to time your hits properly between each uh, versions. But under that, it's... You just time... For, the, the, the cycles are, are fixed pretty much every single time, so you just time your, your shots, and it's pretty simple. And don't think we're gonna see any two cycles, unfortunate. This has been a pretty clean run so far, I gotta say. Yeah, the run has been great so far. Yeah, no, the, mm. no deaths or anything from, from what I saw. The, I think the biggest mistake we've seen so far is the uh, scrolly scroll miss. Yeah, that's true. Uh, 5 1 here. Uh, one of, if not the purest levels in the game. We're just gonna be rolling and jumping. No glitches here or anything, just. Just some tight rolls, some tight jumps. But yeah, overall, War 5 is one of my favorite run, worlds to speedrun, but it's just so easy to just instantly die though in that world. But thank god for no RT viable wrong warps. Except, well, because T, but <clears throat> that's another story for another day. But overall, World 5 is it's just pure platforming, so... Well, 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 this stage, well, this stage and Gusty are, they're, 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 they're pure, but they're really, they're really good. They're really good to play. Yeah, they're... True. They're very good stages. Ghostly is one of my favorite stages, again, to do uh, L practice on. Not at all here. Gonna be seeing. Uh, now, if you played this casually, uh, most likely you were focused on just getting the plus barrels and avoiding the minus barrels and only jumping where we feel like you need to. Uh, but here, though, uh, he's gonna be avoid. He's going to be intentionally avoiding some plus barrels and running into some minus barrels uh, bec uh, because because. Uh, is it harder to build momentum or conserve momentum? Because it's pretty much, pretty much most of the jump that Cus is going to be doing are calculated to uh, to save a little bit of time each time. And if you try to do this level optimally over just doing the level normally, you save about two to three seconds. So it's pretty significant in an auto scroller. But then again, that's an auto scroller, so uh, more time for donations. Absolutely. Sorry, I had myself muted. I was trying to find where Discord was. Uh, we have $10 from Plasma Whip. Donkey Kong Country 2 is the best of the three, hands down. Legendary soundtrack and impress impressionable atmosphere. Thanks for running this amazing game. You know, Donkey Kong Country 2 is pretty great, but I think 3 is where it's at. And that's where everyone booed. <laughs> we also have... Am I in trouble here? Uh, <laughs> okay, no, he's, a lot of people would say two, but three is good. Three is great, but I'm sorry, but my heart goes out to the KC2. I'm sorry, Liz. <laughs> it's okay. I know I'm weird. <laughs> I got the glade here. Uh, uh, the gimmick of this stage is that there is a uh, there is a wind that goes that that goes left to right and. If you use it to your advantage, you can go really, really fast. Uh, so contrary to what some might think, the wind here is not random. It is, uh, it is, it's based on your position and, and it is timing and position based. So the runners, they know when to draw, they know when to jump to use the wind perfectly to their advantage. To make the, 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 the most use of the wind here. Yeah, to use your the wind the, the wind mechanic to boost yourself as much as possible without slowing down too much. The rolly roll, yay! Nice. I love that strat. Oh, LZ swap, very nice.
If you've played this stage as a casual, you've probably used the, uh, the purple bearer to make your way down here. But uh, Takatsu has the level memorized and because the game gives you the ability to let go of these parrots early, uh, we do that. Uh, we, we... So you did normally, yeah. you're... Yeah. Yeah, we, we let go of the parrots as just as soon as possible. Uh, we're just gonna be... Togatsu has the whole level memorized here, so... Well, he's just gonna be... Uh, just going down the stage using... Using uh, Dixie's Glide uh, minimally. Here. This is the best stage to show off. Oh, they're doing a safety strat, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. <laughs> Taking, doing the damage boost, that's perfectly fine. Because in that section that Takatsu took, did the damage boost, um, if you take damage in a certain, in a specific section, you, you, you cannot recover from, and it's super dangerous. You, you have to die anyways. It's pretty frustrating, but overall that was great. Yeah, Very that, well done. Yeah, normally that stage takes like three to two to three minutes to do casually with the parrots. And he just did it in about like 45, 50 seconds. But now we're uh, but now we're in Whip Woods and this yeah. and, and this animal here, the squitter here, is the main is the main star of the show. Uh, by pressing L and R simultaneously, he's able to make these uh, instantaneous webs, uh, and it makes the level go by much faster. Yeah, but uh, this is a very hard stage in every single categories of DKC2, uh, any speedrun DKC2. This stage is arguably one of the hardest stages in the one of the hardest stage in the game because it's very easy to just miss one single one single input, man. You're basically dead. And this, this level yeah, is this, that full section right, of bottomless pit. Yeah, that section right there. Uh, he's like he, he's both he's both sh uh, shooting webs and making platforms at the same time. Uh, that that takes a lot of practice to do, and it's very impressive. It's just very impressive to do here. And that well, was, it's very that, easy to fall into an infinite here in this stage. Yeah, very that, easy. That was very so, that was a very solid. That was a that was a very good stage. Leap of fate. Well done. That was great. Another uh, source of RNG here is Crow. Uh, these barrels here, they can they can spawn left. They can spawn either on the left, on the left or the middle or the right sections of the stage. Uh, in, and in this phase, it, it's this phase is the most critical part of RNG. Right spawn. Ooh. Yeah. So left spawn. So getting left spawn there, which you got. It loses about three yeah, seconds compared to, to compared to an optimal spawn here. Ideally, in this fight, you want right spawns or middle spawns. You do not want left spawns because they lose the most time. It's kind of unfortunate. So, six one here. Uh. We're not gonna be we're not gonna be doing the whole stage, Maverick. You wanna elaborate on that? Oh, so the zip. So it's it's a pretty it's a pretty unique strat that was found in the last year or so. So what Tonkatsu is gonna try or at least attempt is to bring a logjaw all the way back to the trend the Angar transformation barrel because you're able to actually go through the uh, Angar and transformation barrel, but. It's not easy. You gotta bait the lockjaw all the way back to the uh, Angard barrel. You need to do it a couple of times, and you need to be careful to not despawn the lockjaw. That's yeah. And the reason he's it's very hard. And the reason he's doing that is so that he can do this. Uh, okay. Well, never mind. Actually, he can get a DK bro, So I think he has another attempt. But yeah. What he? But yeah. What he's? Uh, what he's setting up for here is he's. The reason he's taking the luck jaw over to that uh, on guard barrel is there's a there's a wall and a ceiling that you can put that if you swap you can possession yourself you can possession your other kong between the wall and the ceiling and if you time your swap just right you can do that and go to the goal immediately nice and that was and that was uh, that is the uh, that's the most that's the most recent discovery 
uh, that, that was discovered uh, earlier this year, uh, I think in April. And that saves, and that saves 15, 14 seconds. Our six zip saves 15 seconds, I will not hear otherwise. <laughs> but yeah, the Arctic Zip, uh, as you just saw, saves 15 seconds, and it, it, it's pretty sick, but as you just saw, if you get it first try, you save 15 seconds over a regular um, Arctic attempt, over yep. doing Arctic Abyss the normal way, but now yep. Windy Well, so... This is the reason why Tonkatsu is playing on Japanese 1.0 instead of U 1.0. And it's, it's because of a server specific damage boost that Tonkatsu is going to be doing after the halfway point. That, yeah, that deep boost right there that he did, it saves... Uh, uh, if you were to do that on U 1.0, he would be softlocked because the camera would not follow up on him up. And he saves 4 yeah, seconds. You're... And that deep, boost, that deep boost that he did right there saves 4 seconds. And that's that skip that that uh, he's right there. He skipped the B there. Uh, if you uh, if you if you run into the wind, if you jump into the wind in a very specific way, you can uh, you can skip using you can skip one of the bees there. But six three. That's called ghetto bees. <laughs> but now we're coming into the pretty the the the. the one of the biggest thing that was found in recent, the biggest discovery though for Warplus. So it's gonna be pretty a pretty convoluted explanation, but I will try to make it so that it's not too hard to understand. All right, so there's a trick in the game called the infinite team throwing that he's Takatsu is doing. Normally, this is a frame perfect trick. So whenever you, t you throw your Kong upwards and your Kong throw comes back to your shoulders, you have a one frame window to be able to jump again. This is what Tonkatsu is doing right now. That's 1.0 that's 1. exclusive, by the way. Yes, ex exactly. It's exclusive to 1.0. And that's why but, he's running 1.0. Uh, yes, that's the main reason why Warpless uh, is doing Warpless on 1.0. But uh, within the last year or so, if I remember, there was something that was found by the Japanese community is that there's some sort of switch that goes on and off every nine minutes in game. And for whatever reason, when that switch is on, uh, this causes some sort of underflow. And that underflow actually interacts with the uh, with the infinite team throwing trick that Tonkatsu is doing. Is that it actually removes the frame perfect restriction? You're basically you're basically using it. You can basically use that trick for free. But just because you have a frame perfect trick you can use for free doesn't mean this stage is any easier by any means. Oh no, quite on the contrary. This stage is pretty hard by what he's doing. Yeah, and this he killed very hard. And he killed himself there so that he can uh, so that he can get the crusher back up there. Uh, yes, that, I, that's I, a safety strat that he did. Yeah. Uh so that, that, that's the reason why so if you guys uh, remember uh when he re-entered war when he re-entered uh 4 4 and got the plus barrel that plus barrel it resets that that uh that timer that nine minute timer uh so that he, he uh that manipulates the timer in such a way that uh that when he's on good pace he get he he'll get here when that state is on yeah, you're able to have the this underflow active, the uh, this nine minute thing active for the entirety of Castle Crush, and you won't you won't have to worry about it. And that's this is why he, the uh, Tonkatsu did get the plus barrel to make sure to have the to have it as well. It's a safety strat to have it for the entirety oh. of the stage. So as, as you can see, it's uh, it's not easy at all because the moment the moment you take one a single hit. You have you, you fall down a, a very long distance and you have to wait for the crusher to come back up. You need to be very careful to time your throws. Time your throws, time your movement, and time your jumps very carefully. Yeah, fortunately Tonkatsu took damage, so just I don't, I don't think that's skippable, but, is it? Uh that's a good question. Yeah, but it... since Tonkatsu has it active, he can you Tonkatsu can still have it, for, can still resume doing uh, the uh, the infinite team throw. So 
So that's the biggest discovery that was found in the, within the last uh, year or so for this level in Warpless. And in total, if you do it if, without any safety strats, this saves about 45 to 50 seconds. And if you do, if you uh, if you don't do the safety strat, if you elect to do the entire stage without death warping, uh, you save 90 seconds, which is huge. And just like that, he's done with the level. That level normally takes four to four and a half minutes. Uh, if... Yeah, it's about a four and a half minute auto scroller. It's pretty damn long. Because in any percent or 102, you would do either you would do a wrong warp or you would do the castle crush kip, but it's not allowed in War Plus. But that was great. Yeah, I'm really glad this was that this was able to be showcased. That was great. So now Clapper's Cavern. So this is a pretty a pretty standard stage. It's a pretty good stage in my opinion, so as in, I don't think there's much to talk about in this stage, just just straight platforming, it's pretty straightforward. Maybe there will be one thing that, that Tom Kotsu will be doing is the uh, throw your girlfriend strat. <laughs> I like that strat, so there's an invincibility barrel that he's going to be taking. And, and so you can roll to these bees here. Yeah, exactly. You want to do the throw your girlfriend's try to make sure you have the maximum time available with the invincibility barrel to be able to, to roll through all the bees at the end of clappers to uh, and also it gives you a lot of momentum at the same time so yeah silk so, uh chaining chamber here is it's one of the it's one of the it's in my opinion the, be the best stage well one of the best stages in the game to just uh, play and watch Especially in Warpless and 102, uh, like the, 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 this level is entirely just about uh, just just climbing up, the, just climbing up this rope, this climbing up this chain, and uh, s similarly to Hornet Hole, uh, you can go, you can uh, you can go extremely fast here. Well, well, there's a zip here that he's gonna be doing. Oh, never mind. Uh, can you still do it? Uh... Yes, you can. Alright, take two. Very nice. Uh, that so that uh, that's those zips that he did there uh, were uh, I, I believe 1.0 exclusive. And there are some certain spots. Woo! Yeah, there's <laughs> yeah there's some certain spots where you can where you can uh, press where you can press uh, L left and select. And if you do that, you can clip through the wall and be able to team throw. But that, yeah, that's exclusive to 1.0, but don't do that in level like your parachute panic, for example, because you're gonna have a bad time if you do it. If you try to uh, do what he did in that stage, it's not fun. Don't do that. But that CLC, it's a pretty, uh, that's a great, that's a really great stage. In my yeah, yeah, this is Toxic Hour. Uh, uh, this is a very hard stage because look at all these, look at all these double jumps the Kato is doing. We covered those, in, we covered those at the beginning uh, in 1.5. Uh, we're gonna be seeing it a lot more here. Oh my goodness, that was very good. No, mi no miss jumps. That is very hard. It, that is very hard. Each of those double that was jumps. Amazing. Yeah, each of those double jumps uh, is a three from window. Uh, the short, they're short hop double jumps where uh, they're short hop double jumps where you can't press B for any longer than three frames, and then there's two double jumps where you have to press B, you have to repress B um, within a three foot window to get it. All right, so Kato doing the safety strategy here for the bird section. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't blame him because it's toxic tower. I like to say that this level is called choke city and. Uh, it's very easy to just do one mistake and just uh, you pretty much you can lose a uh, you can easily good lose very good very good pace runs here very easily it doesn't just take one mistake and just you're basically dead in that stage this is the most technical stage in the game but yeah. that was great that was very well yeah. done everyone's had that happen to them at least once oh hey uh, there's donkey we s hey we saved donkey game's over right oh wait Run, run's over, guys. <laughs> no, wait, the run is not over. We still have one more stage and one more boss to go. Yep. So, is he going to go for the jump? Right, there's a jump. Oh, very nice. Uh, okay, good. Uh, never mind. Uh, so, yeah, this stage here... Yeah, that beginning section there is very technical to do and 
and pretty hard. There's there uh, the safety strat there is to, is to not go for uh, the jump and just just wait for the and just wait for the cloak there to get off screen. Yeah, you can despawn the cloak and you're able to go freely without waiting too much. But the jump, you it, it just saves like 0.5 to 0.7. But and, if you get hit, you lose everything. And, <laughs> it's pretty. And, uh, it's and pretty frustrating if you, if you when that happens. There, uh, uh, normally here the race, uh, the ra he would be racing the uh, the screech there. Uh, normally the uh, race music would be playing there, but because he what, but uh, if you fly over, uh, if you fly over screech, if you fly over screech, you can skip uh, the race, the race uh, aspect of this level entirely, and that's and that saves about that saves uh. A second and a half because it skips the count it skips waiting for the countdown to start don't don't cut took it took it save at the end but that's perfectly fine because the last uh, vertical section it's it's very deceiving the overall the overall bramble hitboxes can be very deceiving and you can take damage when you don't expect it then yeah you're basically dead again it's not fun when that happens but overall that was a, that was a good sprint you took it safe but that's perfectly fine and now we're on the key rule so this is basically a glorified cutscene so it isn't much happening here so as if uh, some people like to call it a glorified cutscene so you just want the only thing you can do in this fight is just throw the cannonball as fast as possible and uh, as soon as possible yeah. Kiro's, yeah as soon as possible in Kiro's blunderbuss and that's pretty much it so time will be uh, when the cream coin falls on the ground after uh, beating Kiro. But other than that, it's time for donations. Sure thing. We do have several. There's a lot of hype for this run. Uh, a lot of people really loving it. We have $100 from Offered Leak. My family gifted me Donkey Kong Country 2 when I was a kid. I stupidly traded away this amazing game. Allow me to publicly apologize for this terrible mistake. Good luck to all the speedrunners. We have uh, one I, I really like here. One from Anonymous for $25 that says, Rambi is Rambe. Hell yeah. That's what I thank hear. You for the, thank uh, you for the disagree. Disagree. <laughs> Hey, Rambi, by the way. Don't, 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 listen to, don't listen to most talking runners. They'll tell you about how awful Rambi is. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I heavily dislike Rambi. Yeah. Do we Not have time for more? Time. I don't know how long this uh, this cutscene yeah, battle is. <laughs> okay. Uh, we should. We have twenty dollars. All right, awesome. We have twenty dollars from Heath Bar. Uh, just had to donate during uh, Tonkatsu's run for my favorite game on the SNES, Donkey Kong Country 2. He was not monkeying around. Thank you for everyone involved with SGDQ for making this year happen. Can we get a hype for all the commentators, runners, and tech crew? Hype. <laughs> hype. Uh, $25 from Adam153. Hope this DKC2, uh, ho hope this makes the DKC2 run. Uh, go, Tenkatsu. Love that game for decades. Here's my haiku. They match the inputs, applying dexterity to skip and help. Adam. Thank you, Adam. This is a pretty long battle, isn't it? Yes, it's a, it's a very long fight. It's a, as I said, it's a glorified cutscene. There isn't a, much going on. Pretty long. All right. But we're on the final phase now. It's gonna be time will be coming up shortly. And there's a the final throw. Honestly, that's a that that's an excellent time for a marathon. 50, 50, 51 28 is amazing. 28. That is that's amazing. I, I don't think I can. I don't think I can. That is impressive. Honestly, that is an excellent time for a marathon for a marathon run. That was great. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, nice run, Scott, too. Nice run, Tonk, that was great. Yeah, thanks everyone, Trex, Mad Mac, for commentary. <clears throat> oh, no problem. So, can I conclude the round now? Sure. Okay, so first off, I want to thank Games Done Quick for adding me, and I was very honored to be able to run DKC2 for this marathon. So let's keep on watching, donating, and enjoying the marathon. And yeah, thank you for watching again. Can I do some quick shout outs before we uh, can end it here? <clears throat> very yeah, fast. Go ahead. All right, so. Shout out to all the DKC speedruns community. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. And if anyone is interested in learning and speedrunning any of the DKC games, come check out our wiki, dkcspeedruns.com. And then come check out our Discord, DKC, DKC speedruns. So thanks, Tonkazu, for doing the run. For doing the run. That was amazing. Ch thanks, Chilex, for uh, commentating alongside me. I, I wasn't sure how good it was uh, going to be comfortable doing it alone, but I'm glad you, you said yes and you were. Uh, commentated with me really yeah i'm really, I'm, I'm really glad. glad i'm glad and uh and also uh thank you gq that for allowing it so for allowing this game in so yeah so uh that's dkct warplet i hope i hope uh, everyone enjoyed so thank you guys for watching and uh rolling out yeah All right, thank you again to Tenkatsu for that incredible uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 run. Very nice job. You're watching Summer Games Done Quick 2020 online. I have been your host, Listar, but it is time for me to go. My people need me. By that, I mean I'm probably going to go eat. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, don't go anywhere, though, because we have plenty more coming up. And... Uh, we're going to uh, be right back after a quick word from our sponsors.
Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online. I am Pythonicus, and I'll be your host for the next few runs. Now, uh, as much as I would love to get straight into reading some of your extremely generous donations off, I do want to remind you guys what we're doing here. We are raising money for Doctors Without Borders, uh, and Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, is an international medical humanitarian aid organization that works in over 70 countries around the world, providing life-saving medical humanitarian care and speaking out about what they see in those areas. Their work aids people based solely on need, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or political affiliation. MSF is committed to safeguarding their patients' rights to autonomy, confidentiality, and informed consent. 90% of their staff is national, meaning they live locally and are from the country that they work in. MSF relies mainly on the generosity of individual donors with over 90% of MSF's income coming from private donors giving small amounts. So what that means is that every single one of your donations counts and we are greatly appreciative of everything. So we still have some hype left over from the uh, DKC2 run. So let me talk about that a little bit. We have $25 from Cruxus who says... So we're doing poetry this year. How about some iambic pentameter? When those around the world require aid, the folks at MSF don't hesitate. These heroes never fail to offer help, no matter where or when disaster strikes. So in this age of global ails and strife, I beg your generosity, my friends. Support these brave and selfless souls today. Your faith in them will never be betrayed. Thank you very much, Cruxus. 